Welcome to my first film in VR 180. Now this is gonna be best experienced using your headset and headphones. However, if you just have your phone or you're scrolling around on your computer screen, you can look at all the different locations that we're gonna to go to and still be able to get an immersive experience. Now for this first film, I really wanted to explain what is VR 180 so that you can better experience the other three films in this series. All right, so let's go on a little adventure and let's talk about VR 180. So for this film, I'm going to be taking you on experience from the ocean up into the mountains, some of my favorite places here in Southern California. So the whole reason to shoot in VR is for the immersive experience. If you have goggles on right now, you're here on the beach with me in Southern California on a not so nice day. And that's what I think is so powerful about this medium. I don't think it's a gimmick. I don't think this is gonna be going away anytime soon because the power of immersing your audience is so unique. And it's something that you can't necessarily do with other forms of video content. Think about it. If you have your goggles on right now, you're not being distracted by your phone. You're not doing something else. You're not multitasking. You're actually here with me on the beach and that's all you're doing. And there's so much power to having someone's attention for a solid piece of time and being able to tell a story. So you'll see when you watch the other films in the series, it's all about the experience and the immersion. So one of the films that I shot was a trip to Thailand where I went and did a film about elephant tourism. But instead of just being with the elephants and talking about the issues and doing an interview with the person running the sanctuary, I wanted to make it a complete immersion. So you're going to experience Thailand from the minute I get off the plane to getting all the way to the elephant sanctuary. And yes, we will go experience the elephants, but there is a lot more to the trip than just that aspect of the film. So it's more about the whole picture rather than just grabbing that one snippet. All right, I gotta climb up these cliffs. So I'm sure you've noticed that things play out a little bit differently in VR 180. So instead of your typical video where things are cut and the attention is directed based on the editing and camera choices, you essentially only have a wide lens on this camera. And the choice of what you're pointed at and what you're looking at is made by you. So in a way, this is much more like theater than it is film. You have longer takes that have to play out over time and I can actually direct your attention by pointing to things on screen or having things happen in different parts of the frame and you actually have to make the choice to look at those. So everyone's experience is a little bit unique when it comes to VR 180. So if I'm standing on this side of the frame, I could be talking about something over here, but there could be action happening over there. Now you could play this up and you could have things happening all over the frame and you use audio and you use different cues on screen to drive attention one way or the other. So I might point that way, you're gonna look that way. And so that's what's really unique about this format. So let's talk about the gear you need for VR 180. So the camera I'm shooting on right now is the Insta360 Evo. It's an awesome, cheap, small VR 180 camera that makes it much more accessible than some of the bigger options out there. Now, this is a much bigger camera, but it's still pretty portable. Like I could throw it in this bag and I took this all over the jungles of Thailand with a few batteries and I was able to work with this camera. This is the K1 Pro from Zcam. Now, the camera, as you can see, has two lenses. That's what makes VR 180 so special you're getting that stereoscopic view. So you're shooting two identical images, but they're a little bit separated, so you get that depth. Now, the other things you need besides a camera 
is a way to hold the camera because when you're shooting VR 180, you can't really have the camera moving around. You have to set it down, but you also don't want to see the legs of the tripod. So to combat that, what you have is a monopod and on the bottom, I have this little Benro hi-hat. Works great and at the top, I have a ball head with just an extension bracket so that I can avoid seeing anything down below. So if you look straight down, you won't see the tripod because it's extended out a little bit away from the whole setup. This is like the most stripped down documentary run and gun style kit that I could come up with. And it's not a ton of gear. I've been able to do a lot of hiking just carrying this setup. Now, when it comes to audio, I actually am using an audio recorder that's just in my backpack. This has been the way that I've found to make this work the easiest for me because I always have my Shimoda bag on. And what I've done is I just put it in the front pocket. So you have to get creative when it comes to audio because there is no audio input on these cameras. So there's no way to shoot sync sound. You have to basically record it externally and then sync it up later. And for me, all I've done is at the beginning of each take, do a clap and it's an easy sync point. And I've had no issues syncing any of the audio to the visuals. Now beyond that, the other audio that I'm collecting, you can use spatial mics or you could just use an audio recorder to get some ambience and then build out your soundscape because it's so important to immerse your audience into the scenes that you're in. <sighs> Only a few more stairs to go. There are some unique challenges when it comes to VR 180. Now, when you're doing VR 360, you can reorient the frame later. However, with VR 180, essentially what you shoot is what you get. You can't change the frame later in post. So with this shot, if the horizon was off or if my angle was off a little bit, then I can't go back and edit it. I can't like crop in, I can't move the frame. So you're basically stuck with what you got. So you have to be really specific on set and see your horizon. You have to see that your camera's level. You have to make sure that everything is perfect before you hit record because there's no going back. Pretty cool, right? Going up through the woods now, it's uh, very different than the beach. And there's some unique history to this part of uh, the mountains here in Santa Monica. So people used to live down here in the canyons. They had like a completely sustainable setup where there was houses, they had a power plant, they had water tanks. They basically could live off the grid here. And then it changed hands over the years. And now it's just a bunch of ruins. And they're slowly just deteriorating more and more. It's such an interesting place to go and explore. So this is the road that actually used to come out of this community. But when you're shooting in VR 180, there is a unique challenge when it comes to lighting, like the sun. So shooting in this run and gun style, you have to always be thinking about where is the sun in relation to the lenses? Because if you have a flare on one lens and it's not on the other lens, you're gonna have this stereo discrepancy. And this goes for anything that happens. If you have a raindrop that hits one side, but not the other in the exact same spot, you're gonna have this weird blurring effect happen. So you have to be consciously aware of, are both lenses seeing the exact same image? And so when you have something like the sun, which is behind these trees right now, what I've found that has worked very well is just finding a bit of shade and covering both lenses equally. And the same thing, if it's raining or if there's like something happening in the air that might hit the lenses, you have to find a moment to let that pass to be able to turn on the VR camera and get good shots. I actually had some major issues in Thailand because when we were shooting, it started pouring on us. So I had to put the camera away and just wait until you know we had a clear break in the water before we actually could start shooting again. Record. Record. I think you just got I just hit record as they came through. 
So point of view is super important when it comes to VR content. So if you put the camera too low, I'm now looking down on you. And if I put the camera up way too high, well then you're looking down on me. So where you place the camera is super important and you have to think of the point of view of the viewer. And so what happens is that VR, basically the camera is you. And you have to think about that when you're creating content. So rather than the camera being a camera and someone's kind of experiencing it as like a step removed, what happens is when you shoot VR content, the camera becomes the viewer. So you are those two lenses that are right there in front of me. So I have to think about that when I'm creating my videos. So how are you going to feel when I put the camera down there and I'm standing up here? All of a sudden you have to now look up at me. And the same thing happens if I was to put the camera up on top of that rock and you were having to look down. So use this to your advantage when you're creating VR style content. How can you make the camera be a part of the story because you want to think about how the camera is the person and how that person's going to feel in that position to where you put the camera. It all makes, it all factors in when you're actually creating your video. Okay, we're almost at the summit. Let's get up there. Oh, awesome, made it to the summit. So, this is a great time to talk about the resolution issues when it comes to VR, VR 180. So you can see me clear and it's easy to focus on subjects kind of in this space. But when you look out at a view like this, you really can't see the detail. And that's one of the challenges when it comes to VR content. So the sweet spot is between three and 20 feet. Everything beyond that kind of just becomes blurry and when you get too close, you start having stereo issues. So three to 20 feet is kind of like your sweet spot. And this kind of ties back into the whole idea of theater content because you're playing in this theater, this three to 20 foot space, and that's where you have to work. Everything else around it is nice scenery and you can see some things, but you really can't use this style of content to show landscapes and do these big epic views. And so that really plays into how you create your films. All right, this was an awesome hike, but let's go back to the studio and let's just talk a little bit about editing and how I piece all this together. Welcome to my studio. So this is where I shoot a lot of my YouTube content. Now, when it comes to editing VR 180, that's probably one of the hardest things about this entire format. And you have to start thinking differently when you do the whole editing process. And the cutting is actually fairly simple. It's long takes, and then you do a transition of some sort. You can cut, you can do a fade to black, which looks like a blink in the viewer's eyes, or you can do a slight fade. So you have to, look through the goggles and see, is your cut jarring going from one scene to the other? And also, are you cutting too fast? And those are kind of the key things you wanna think about when you're editing VR 180. Now, the rest of the workflow is where it gets difficult because you have to export the files, you have to transcode them a certain way, and then you have to inject them with metadata. And all of this is available, and it's actually fairly easy once you do it once, but it was a learning curve for me to learn this whole editing workflow. So if you're interested in more about editing VR 180 content, I'll put a link down below in the description to a blog post that I did where I've documented everything that I've done. And if you're interested more in shooting and editing and everything else in the VR 180 format, 
then let me know in the comments and I will create more videos around this style of filmmaking. But I hope this was a good introduction into VR 180, virtual reality content, to get you up to speed for the three videos that I have coming after this one. I highly suggest if you don't have a headset, you get one or you find a friend that has one so you can watch these films because they are best experienced when you have the headset on. And the elephant film that I did and the Thailand documentary are extremely immersive and you really get a sense that you're in Thailand. So they're super fun to watch with the goggles. All right, guys, that is it. I will see you on the next one.